If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People, November 4th, 2008. Hi, I'm Adam Wegman, owner of W Designs Jewelry. I am a jewelry designer, goldsmith and silversmith, and today we're going to be making a moose antler. What I do to start a piece of jewelry is I design a sketch. So I come up with ideas um, based on things I see in nature or even in metropolitan areas or whatever it may be. In our instance today, we're going to be doing a moose antler. So I did a sketch of a moose antler that I liked, and then I draw it out on a piece of wax. And then I use various tools to carve and shape the wax into what I think replicates a realistic moose antler. I typically start out by roughing out the outline with a large burr and taking a lot of material fast. And then what I do is switch to smaller burrs to get in the more detailed areas. What inspires me to make jewelry is a person's heart. It's always a representation of something someone either went through or has enjoyed in their life or even a deep hurt and it's a remembrance of someone loved from the past or, or the present or a hope for the future. So a lot of the designs I make are based on those feelings and, and on a very personal level. I'm going to switch burrs and get a smaller one so I can get in between these areas for the moose antler that I'm creating. So right here I have a stock piece of wax. It's just a stock thickness. And I have to cut these small negative spaces in between the tines on the moose antler. And I need a small burr to get in between these little tines on the moose antler. And this is the one I have available, but the cutting depth isn't uh, deep enough to get through this. So I'm gonna have to file the back of my moose antler off to make this piece thinner so my burr can cut all the way through the workpiece. And I need to do that eventually anyway, so I'll just start it now. I'm going to mark a line so I don't go too far. I went to school to be a machinist, so working with metal is what I've always loved to do. And I ended up working at a jewelry store and they started training me to do jewelry repair and some ring cleanings and inspections and things like that. And from there I just started developing uh, a talent for setting stones and doing more fabrication and things like that. And uh, we actually moved away from that city and so I decided just to go out on my own and, and start designing on my own. So my creative process is somewhat chaotic since my shop is in my home and then my studio is in my home so I have a lot of interruptions with a growing family but that's the part that makes it interesting and unique. Some days I have a lot of creative juices flowing and I can come up with ideas and pieces and other days I am struggling. I stare at a piece, um, I may make a mistake or I might even just have to walk away for the day because it's just not happening. When I need to walk away from my jewelry bench to, I guess, decompress, I do clean and jerks. So I lift some heavy weights to just get rid of the stress and that helps me a lot. All right, that's as good as I can get it with the flex shaft with a burr. So now I'm gonna to switch to a file. 
to finish it up and make all the details and clean everything up and make it look like a real moose antler. One thing I like to tell people, is, and that I've discovered this over my life so far, is that in modern day times, we're, we're made to fit into a box. Everything fits in a box nice and neat. Um, and if you don't fit inside the box, you're considered an outcast or kind of weird or whatever. And I actually am trying to break that mold. And I encourage people to think outside the box. Be weird, be yourself express yourself in whatever way you think is, is necessary. I think God makes us all individuals, and I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all for anything. And that includes jewelry. I'm just rounding everything off with my file here. So I think it's a great way to express who you are and your personality and the differences between you and another person and to actually celebrate our differences instead of making them a source of conflict. All right, now I'm gonna switch to an X-Acto knife to get into the uh, really tight spots that I can't get a file into. I get a sense of freedom from designing. I tend to step outside the box often in my life in general, and jewelry, I've noticed, is, um, for the most part, it's very traditional. And so I like to expand on the traditional and bring in elements that other people don't use a lot of times. Different finishes, um, abstract ideas, more um, asymmetrical designs versus everything being symmetrical. This file has a bunch of wax that's on it, so I'm going to clean it. This one I was using has a, it's rounded on both sides which works nice for rounding things. Now I need to get into a, more of a straight place, so this file has a, a straight edge. It's called a needle file. I'm liking how this looks on the front, but I noticed when I turn it over, this section right here got thin. So I'm going to build it back up with a wax pen. I'm, I think when I was filing, I had my file at an angle a little bit, but that's okay. Wax is forgiving. We can add some more and, and uh, file it back down. So I'll turn this on. This is my wax pen that I heat up. And uh, just wait a couple seconds and this will get hot. It's already melting wax, so we just take some from here and put it in my thin spot here. So using the hand file, I can get really detailed on the little nooks and crannies within my design. And actually, you could just use a file and create a wax design. I choose to use some electrical methods just for time purposes. It's a lot faster. But a person can just use files, and I could use files just to create the design. And the files help round the design. They make it more natural, more flowing, and just a representation of what you'd see out in nature. So this will eventually um, go into a flask and plaster will be poured in. Then it's heated in a kiln and the plaster hardens up. The wax actually melts away and burns out and it leaves a cavity within the plaster of what the wax looked like. So it's called the lost wax process. And then it's going to be cast into silver. I created one series called my Armor of God series which is shield of faith and um, other armaments that are talked about in Ephesians 6 in the Bible. And it's a remembrance of the biblical verses that talk about our protection, that we're protected. And then another um, collection that I have is the Outdoor Adventure series, which is 
kind of geared towards um, outdoors, men and women. There's antlers and arrowheads and arrow pieces. This is a an elk antler that I did for the same the same series and a whitetail antler. But one thing I do is I like my pieces to be the same on both sides. So they're reversible. So this will be reversible and these are as well. This one's polished on one side and then I have a dark finish with uh, kind of a brushing on the other side. So they're reversible and they're um, you know able to be worn with different outfits and whatever you're feeling like if you want to have more flashy look you can wear it this way or subdued you can wear it with the dark inside out. So our moose antler is pretty much finished. I have some final details but um, I'll do that later. And the next step is to get it cast into silver which I don't do. I send that out. That's the only part of the jewelry process I don't do. Um, but I just wanted to show this to you because the next step we'll show you is a rough cast piece. When I get it back you'll see how it looks. So here's a ring I just got back from being cast. This is sterling silver. It doesn't look like much now because it's a really matte finish and it comes out whitish looking like this. And here is the sprue, and the sprue is where the material was poured into the mold. It's the shaft that the material comes through to get into the ring cavity. And it's left on the back of the ring and I have to grind it off with my, with my buffing unit. Next I'll go over to my metal bench and I'll use a, a sanding wheel and I'll sand all the rough edges and then I'll use a silicone wheel to get it further down and then I come back here with a buffing wheel on here and I'll polish everything up. But what I love about jewelry is it represents something deeper for people. It's um, given to a loved one for an anniversary or um, you know upon the birth of a child or things like that. And so it's always a representation of some, something with deeper meaning, meaning. And it's one thing that people hang on to for, throughout their lives. It's handed down from generation to generation. And I just think it has a lot of value because of that. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.